Yo, 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 welcome back to another Florida Man adventure. So today I thought I'd uh, film a very quick short video to kind of show maybe some of you newer fossil hunters what there is to find on the rivers. I know when I first got started fossil hunting when I was maybe four or five, um, we were throwing back a lot of really good fossils for the first probably 10 years uh, because we just didn't really know what there was. You know, this is really before fossil hunting became a big thing on YouTube. And so we weren't able really to learn to identify a lot of these kind of common fossils that will come across your sieve. I, mean, I know we threw back giant ground sloth teeth. I knew we, I know we throw threw back tons of giant armadillo scoots. Who knows what else? I mean, shoot, I'm still learning. I'm still throwing back stuff accidentally. Um, but I think uh, that this will be a very helpful and informative video, especially to the new hunter. So uh, without further ado, let me show you what a good day on the river looks like. All right, to kind of start off, uh, this is kind of the bigger bone that we got. Um, so just a couple things real fast. A lot of this is going to be kind of some more elephant material. We got some larger animals in here, like maybe horse or cow, stuff like that. But uh, to start off, we got a couple of uh, mammoth vertebrae. <laughs> So these are kind of busted up, not in the greatest of condition, but nonetheless pretty cool. I imagine based on the shape of this bone, we've got this uh, kind of uh, ridge right here. This is probably a big old scapula or shoulder blade. So imagine this kind of all drawn out uh, would be actually pretty big bone. That's possibly what this is as well. Just kind of looking at the back of this, um, they have that same kind of ridge. Uh, this is probably some kind of ankle joint. Um, I could be wrong on that, but that's what that looks like to me. Maybe sloth, I don't know. Um, you know with some of these bigger bones, it is a little bit of guesswork, um, but you are able to tell kind of some of these. This is probably the oldest fossil from the day. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. Who would have thought that, huh? So it was probably lost a long, long time ago. Uh, some of the things I'd really like to find are these uh, elephant toe bones so this is going to be from a mammoth or mastodon so if you google what a picture of a mastodon foot looks like you'll see a whole bunch of bones about this size that comprise the toe so uh well each foot i should say so cool we got those um you see all four of these bones right here have all of these large pores in them you know it's about finger size um basically this is indicative of again elephant skull so if you think about a, a mammoth or mastodon, um, how big their head is and how heavy and dense that skull would be if it were solid bone all the way through. So when they were created, they were designed with all these honeycomb structure like patterns all throughout the bone to make it super light. So that, that way the elephant can keep his head up. Um, this bone, still trying to figure out what it is. Uh, it looks really familiar. I think it might be the end of a, uh, a leg bone or something like that from a large animal. Uh, and that would be where the, the socket is, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So I don't know. This is cool. This is a, a, a lot, very large calcaneus. Um, this is a very typical shape for a calcaneus or calcaneum. Um, we have two different words we can call them by. Um, so if you know your Latin, you can use either second declension endings. Um, but so this is going to be the really, this is going to be part of the ankle joint in animals and humans. This is going to be your heel bone. Um, but for, uh, for a lot of ruminants and other animals like that, uh, animals that chew the cud, um, this is going to be kind of like their, their back elbow joint. Let's see, we've got a couple other odds and ends. You know, sometimes I'll just bring back these bigger pieces of bone, not really sure what they are, with maybe some kind of intent to hopefully figure out what it is later on. You know, just cool. I like it. Uh, of course, this is a the end of a big old femur or something of that sort. Um, big leg bone of probably an elephant. Um, really, there's only two kinds of animals that this could be from, either an elephant or a ground sloth. So that's pretty cool. And that's a general description for really all of these. Um, got a couple more, I guess. My best guess on this at the moment, again, could be wrong, is that it might be a patella or a kneecap 
from maybe a small elephant. And then of course this right here is pretty cool. This is going to be some fossilized ivory from an elephant. So mammoth or mastodon. Um, a couple ways that you can tell. One is this typical tree bark pattern. It looks genuinely like tree bark. Um, on this piece, it's not totally evident. Um, I have to show you another piece in a little bit, but you can typically see this cross hatch pattern on the sides as well. Um, almost like a tic-tac-toe board, which is very, very indicative of fossilized ivory. So that's a pretty nice sized chunk. So uh, I guess let's go inside and let's take a look at some of the teeth and other small bones we got. We'll just start it off with some pretty cool stuff. These are going to be fossilized camel or llama teeth. So obviously these two are going to be nice size molars. This is going to be an incisor. That's pretty typical shape of a camelid incisor. So that's pretty cool. Most people don't know, however, camels and horses actually have canines. So this is going to be the chewing part. And then the rest of this is that root. So that's actually a pretty unique find. I actually got two on this hunt. Shark teeth. Um, these are actually some pretty decent shark teeth for uh, the river I was on. Got an auriculatus shark tooth, pretty old. And some mackerel shark teeth. So those are really nice examples. This can't go on any Florida river really and not find this. Uh, this is a taper molar. If you haven't ever seen a taper, look one up. They're pretty cool. The colors on this tooth are absolutely beautiful. Love that. This little guy, pretty sure uh, that's a little broken fox tooth. I haven't ever found one before, but 95% uh, sure that's what that is. We've got a couple other small teeth. These are nice little rodent incisors. Could be from a squirrel or a muskrat, something like that. This is pretty unique, actually. Um, this is going to be a little tiny deer incisor. So molars are very, very common on rivers. Um, they're about maybe a third of the size of that taper tooth, but uh, these deer incisors are quite rare, so that was pretty cool. Usually they just slip through the sieve. Got a little canine here, maybe from a raccoon or a river otter. Not totally positive on that, but that's pretty cool. These are very, very common on the river. Uh, giant armadillo scoots, so the, the big bony shell covering the uh, armadillo. This would have been about the size of a small car. So very, very unique to uh, really South or in North America. Um, super, super cool animals. Um, obviously there's still some in South America today, just a little different species. This was quite rare. This is a, a broken giant armadillo tooth. Only the second one I've ever gotten. Looks kind of like a Tootsie Roll. Um, so really, really cool on that. Unfortunately, this uh, got all busted up, but this was a fossilized alligator coprolite. That's going to be fossilized poop. Um, has no smell other than what the river gave it. Um, so pretty cool. This is a, a more better preserved example. A little bit uh, more solid, no pun intended. Uh, this, just like the armadillo scoots, um, this is an alligator scoot. So as you watch alligators swimming along the river, you'll see all over their back, they have these, these large spikes. So that's a pretty well-preserved example of an alligator osteoderm coming from two Greek words that mean bony skin. So uh, that's pretty cool. We got a couple nice alligator teeth here. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times you'll see the alligator teeth you find actually kind of blow up um, as they dry out just because they're not totally well preserved. Um, then I also got a nice section of alligator jaw. You can see all the little holes for the teeth. And then very, very common for reptilian jaws. Um, all these little indentations where they can, I, be I believe it's to help soak heat in. Um, over here, we've got a giant tortoise leg spur. So this would have been on the legs of the giant tortoise, about the size of a Galapagos Island tortoise. So quite a large animal. Um, over here, this is pretty indicative of what you'll find. Um, these are little tiny pieces of mammoth teeth. You know, the real one would be this big, um, super huge. It's actually a pretty good plate. They're made up of all these individual plates. Um, so that's actually a pretty nice chunk, but still very, very minute piece of the tooth. This is another piece of elephant ivory um, that I'd mentioned earlier. And you can see all the little crosshatch patterns on the side of that ivory there. 
Um, those, these lines here, also very indicative of ivory. Another type of elephant that Florida used to have was the Mastodon. This is uh, probably about an eighth of the tooth. Um, so again, would have been quite a large animal, um, quite a large tooth as well. Uh, you'll usually find little tiny pieces of these on the river. Beautiful colors would have been an amazing tooth if that were complete. Um, going back to the white-tailed deer though, um, this is a nice chunk of deer antler I got. You can see a little bit of the skull here. Um, this is the base of another deer antler. Pretty cool, looks just like a modern deer antler. No surprise there. Um, going over to some more uh, sea creatures. This is gonna be a puffer fish mouth plate, also known as the porcupine fish. Um, so obviously we still have these today. These are quite common to find on rivers. Couple of uh, stingray barbs. So these are pretty cool, usually pretty broken and busted up, but nonetheless fun to find. Big old piece of a stingray grinding mouth plate. Very, very common on Florida rivers. You'll find thousands of thousands of these throughout your fossil hunting career if you stick with it. Got a very, very large snake vertebra right here. Haven't ever found one this big, so that's pretty cool. Um, bunch of horse teeth. These are gonna be incisors. Um, very, very delicate. Usually won't find them complete, so this is a pretty good example. Usually find them all busted up. A couple different horse molars. Um, that would be an upper molar. This one, um, probably be a lower, I believe. And then, very, very common to find them, the, the horse molars all busted up as well. That's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, you're always going to find tons of large vertebras on the river. Um, if you can identify vertebrae accurately, you're probably one of the best paleontologists in the world because it's virtually impossible to tell these apart unless you really know what you're doing. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot, especially if, if you're a beginning fossil hunter that uh, you're able to take a lot away and learn. Uh, I guess one thing I forgot to mention, these are a couple of broken giant ground sloth teeth. Um, like I said earlier, I know I was throwing these back for years, um, just not realizing even this one, Almost fooled me. I almost threw it back, but I kept it just in case. And sure enough, it turned out to be another broken ground sloth tooth. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed and uh, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you on the next adventure.